Now, before we talk about all the different technicalities of iPhone photography, before we talk about how to hold your iPhone, different camera settings, camera modes, camera features, and how you can control them, I wanted to take you back to a location that's really special to me. And that is this beautiful beach right here. This beach is where I first fell in love with iPhone photography. Now, it's a beautiful beach in and of itself, but if you come here at the right time of the day for sunset, this place can become truly magical. That's because on this beach, there are so many things we can work with as photographers. We have obviously the beautiful sunset light, but we also have waves in the beach, which can be used as a part of your photos. We have these little islands that are really beautiful as a part of a composition, but on top of all the natural features that we have here, we also have a steady stream of people. And all these elements combined create some truly unique iPhone photography opportunities. I wanted to take you back to a place where I truly enjoy taking photos with the iPhone, because at the end of the day, all the camera techniques, all the camera controls, all the different settings, none of that is gonna matter unless you truly fall in love with iPhone photography. If you don't have that passion, if you don't have that desire to go out there, to take photos, to run around, to look for the best angle, if you don't have that, none of the things we're gonna cover in this course are even gonna make a difference because you simply will not be taking photos. So before we get into all the technical stuff, I just want you to sit back, relax, and see what iPhone photography is like when you already know all of this and when you use all that knowledge to take beautiful photos on this incredible beach. So in many ways, this is a preview for what's to come when you complete this course. And with that said, let's get out my iPhone and let's start shooting as that light is about to get better and better. Now, one of the most interesting things I can do in this slide is capture silhouette photos. Those are the kind of photos that I'm shooting directly into the sun. And if there's a person in front of that sun, then that person is gonna turn into a silhouette. So let's see if we can get some silhouette photos while we're still waiting for that sunset. Now, the first thing I'll need is to find a silhouette subject. And as I look around, I see that there's a person with a bicycle and they just happen to be positioned on that island. So let's head that way to see if that could potentially be a photo opportunity. Now, in general, when I'm taking a lot of photos, I like to walk around the scene. So I'm not just gonna stay in one place and wait for that sunset. Instead, I'm gonna keep walking around, keep exploring. I'll keep looking for different angles. And the more I do that, the more different photos I take, the more likely it is that something will really work out. But now, let me walk towards our subjects over there at that island. Now I'm gonna to switch to my 2x lens. So that's my telephoto, which allows me to get closer. And you'll see that if I now look at that person, they're already making a silhouette, but that huge sun is directly above them and it doesn't quite look nice. What I'm gonna to try to do is get in the shadow behind that person. And from that vantage point, I can get a more interesting shot. Look at that. We have this perfect silhouette. And from my point of view, the sun is directly behind my subject. So right where I have the brightest part of the image, which is the sun, I have the darkest part of the image, which is the silhouette. So I have a lot of contrast right where I want it to be. But let's see if I can get just a tiny bit closer. All right, and as I start getting closer, it actually looks even better. And if I move my iPhone just a bit to my right, just a little bit, you'll see that I can position the sun right next to my subject. So that way you can see just a bit of that sun and that actually creates an interesting effect. So I'm gonna to try to take just a couple of steps closer. Hopefully I won't scare that person away. So I'm gonna be careful now. Now that really looks special to me. So we have two beautiful silhouettes here. We have a silhouette of a person. And we have a silhouette of a bicycle. Now it looks like the bicycle is about to leave and that's okay. I got the shot that I was looking for. But now, let's see what else we can find here. Now over here, we have those islands in the sand and in front of them, we have these puddles. And what's interesting about these puddles is that they're perfectly still. 
In the sea, we have some waves, but the puddles are really, really calm. And that gives me an opportunity to shoot reflection photos. And just about here, if I get my iPhone really, really close to the water, much closer than you'd normally put your iPhone, that reflection is finally coming to life. All right, so I'm gonna shoot a lot of photos using the burst mode of my iPhone. And let's see what we got. This one image right here really worked out well. You'll see that I have that reflection, but because we have wind blowing in this puddle, the reflection has distortions. And that could be a problem or it can look really interesting. Here, I'm actually quite happy with the distortions. So I don't get a perfect reflection shot. It's not a perfect mirror-like symmetry, but still it's good enough. And what I really like about this specific shot is that you'll see that the sun is right between my two subjects. So they're holding hands and right where they're holding hands is where that sun is. And of course, I could only catch a shot like this because I was shooting a burst mode image. Now, if you haven't heard of the burst mode, it's an iPhone camera feature that allows me to take about 10 photos per second. I'll show you how to use it later on in the course. But what's important about the burst mode here is that it allows me to capture the exact right moment when my subjects are positioned in a way that looks pleasing to the eye. If I was just pressing shutter manually, this would not be possible. But now, let's see what else we can find as that light is starting to get better and better. All right, so here, you'll see that the reflection has some distortions. That's because of those waves. And those distortions are changing all the time. So if I look through my burst mode photos, what's gonna happen is that each photo will have a different distortion of that reflection. Some of them are gonna look better, others not so much. But again, I have that variety. Because I'm shooting with burst mode, I get more shots. And later on, I can review several images to see which one I like best. Let's keep exploring. We have another interesting opportunity. So it looks like there are two girls that are about to go swimming and look at that silhouette with those reflections. Oh my God. Now, ideally, when they were right in front of that sun, they wouldn't be overlapping. So that moment didn't work out. But earlier, when they were still a bit more to the left, I got some pretty interesting shots. So that worked out well. Let's see what else we can get. Now there's a little boy who's about to enter the sea, so I'm gonna try to get lower. And that's really turning out interesting. Now, a lot of things just happened here. So that little boy just walked from my right in front of me, in front of that setting sun to the left and then all the way back. So in that time, all I had to do was just sit here and capture a lot of shots using burst mode. And within those 10 or 15 seconds, I got multiple shots that I'm really happy with. Actually, just now they're back, so I gotta shoot again. I think I really got something special. Let's take a look. And look at that. That looks absolutely incredible. And he's coming back again. I couldn't have asked for a better photography subject. And when I'm shooting silhouettes or reflections on the beach, children often really make the photos shine. That's because when adults are walking on the beach, they're just walking. But children are playing, they're running around, they're jumping. And as a result, their silhouettes tend to be a lot more interesting. You'll rarely see a silhouette of an adult sprinting on this beach, but you'll often see that with children. And that's what makes children such great subjects for silhouette photography. Switch to my 2X. Now the boy is just a little too far. So it's the same boy we captured earlier. And he was such a great subject that as long as he's playing here, I want to take some more photos. All right, they're approaching. So I'll be shooting burst. Oh, and look at those splashes of water. I really hope he could do that again. Yep, keep doing that. That looks stunning. Again, the kind of bursts you can capture of children are truly special. 
No adult would ever spend time doing this. But this just looks absolutely stunning in my photos. I'm really happy we got these shots. I knew that boy wouldn't disappoint us this time as well. But now that sunset really is getting closer and closer. So let's see if there's anything else we can capture tonight. Now, one thing we haven't yet used too much tonight are all those waves in the sea. So what I'd like to do now is frame up the kind of shot where those waves will be leading the eye of the viewer directly towards that setting sun. And with a vertical image, you really start to see those clouds entering from the left. That color is really starting to come out in these clouds. So I'm gonna frame this up so that I have the setting sun at the bottom right. I'll have those waves in the foreground and those waves will be leading the eye of the viewer towards those clouds and that setting sun. Again, I'll capture a couple of shots because those waves are changing all the time. So no two images are gonna be the same because of those waves. And I think this composition right here was the shot I was looking for. You'll see I have those perfect waves that are leading the eyes of the viewer towards those incredible clouds to the left of the sunset. So let's get some more shots before that sun dips below the horizon. So there's a person observing the beautiful sunset and they happen to be standing on that island. So I'm gonna try to frame it up like this so that I can see where they're standing. I can see there's water in front of them as well. And let's shoot a burst now. Look at that, that looks just incredible. We had the setting sun with those last rays. It's right above the horizon. And we had that incredible silhouette walking to the left towards that interest in those clouds. So a lot of good things came together in this specific photo. And that's what often happens in your best photos. There won't just be one thing that's really working out. There will be many things that will all come together to create an image that's truly special. That's what iPhone photography is all about. But let's keep exploring. We still have a few minutes left. I don't want to waste any time at all. Now, from this point of view right here, I got something really special. So I'll grab a shot right now. Now you'll see that in the foreground, we have this island of sand that kind of makes this zigzag shape into the distance. And on that island, we have three people who have positioned themselves almost perfectly. And by perfectly, I mean they are at essentially the same distance from each other. So when you have multiple subjects like I do right now, if you can have them be spaced out evenly so that the spaces between them are the same, that tends to work really well in photos. Now, I lost that perfect spacing, but if I walk a few steps forward, I think I'll, oh, nope, it's back again. And it changes again. And that's one of the interesting things about working with people you don't know. There's so much variety. There's so much unpredictability. You never know exactly what you're gonna get. But if you keep taking shots like this of other people in public places, you are gonna get some truly incredible images. You might have to try for a while, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. I promise you that. Now, we've lost that sun, but we still have those clouds being lit up by all this incredible light. And I think it's gonna continue for another five minutes or so. So we have just a little bit of time left to capture the last shots of the day. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, here's one more thing we can try. I have just a bit of wet sand right around here and I'd like to do a reflection. Now, if I wanna get the best reflection possible, the lenses of my iPhone are in the corner and I gotta make sure that that corner where the lenses are is gonna be as close to that wet sand as possible. So I'm gonna actually hold my iPhone right on top of my fingers and I'm holding it upside down because that way I can get as close to that sand as possible. Now that reflection is still getting distorted because of that wind, but I'll grab a shot anyway. And I'm quite happy with how this turned out. All right, I wanna get one more shot. I know that light is running out. It's not gonna get any better now. It's only gonna get worse. But perhaps we can take another shot that would serve as a memory about this incredible night that we have here on this beautiful beach. Oh, 
All right, just about here. Now you'll see that I have a reflection in the shot and the reflection actually comes from wet sand. So to my left and to my right, I have sea with waves, but here I just have wet sand. And ironically, I can get a better mirror-like reflection in that wet sand because that doesn't have any waves. And that's why I was able to capture such a beautiful reflection shot. And I think that's gonna be the last shot of the day. That sunset went by really fast. And while this wasn't the absolute best sunset that I've ever seen, it was nevertheless really, really beautiful. And we captured some truly unique images here. We were shooting silhouettes. We were shooting reflection photos. We were taking a lot of photos using burst mode. I was shooting from a higher angle. I was getting down low. I was literally experimenting with anything I could think of to get a wide variety of shots. Because when that light is right, when you have that narrow window of opportunity that happens around sunset, you don't want to be wasting any time. So I hope that in this video, I was able to give you a sense of what's to come, a preview of what your days and your evenings are going to look like when you take this course and when you become a passionate iPhone photographer. If some of the techniques I used today weren't clear to you, don't worry. We have many more videos where I'll be explaining all these techniques step by step. But at the end of the day, if you don't have that passion, if you don't have that crazy curiosity, that burning desire to just take more and more photos, it's not gonna be worth it unless you have a passion in your heart to go out there and take a lot of photos. That passion, that love for photography is what I'm hoping to give you in this course. Now, I know it's a big promise, but if you take a few hours to complete this course, and if you then go out and practice the things you learned, your life is never gonna be the same again. And you're gonna have an incredible hobby for the rest of your life and you're gonna capture tens of thousands of truly incredible photos as you continue your journey in iPhone photography.